Okay, we're gonna do another space project, and this is going to be a landscape. Now, we're gonna get the basics of the landscape done. Please don't feel like you have to do the same pictures I'm doing. Um, this is another great resource from artprojectsforkids.org. Uh, I recommend visiting that a lot if art is a passion of yours. So anyway, we're gonna work on, uh, this is a lake, Side landscape and the first step is to draw and I'm not using a straight edge on this one okay I don't want things to be perfect but we're gonna draw five kind of rough looking diagonal lines and I did some little ghost points so that I had a visual of where I wanted them to go so I'm gonna start up here and I'm gonna draw, that is really light. I'll try to do a little bit darker. Like that. And then I put a little mark there. So I'll come right there. And they don't all have to, you know, they don't have to alternate. Right there. And right there. Let me make that one a little darker for you. Okay. So that is five rough looking diagonal lines. One, two, three, four, five. And I'm pretty pleased with that. All right, so then we're going to have to start adding in. We have a foreground, a middle ground, and a background. So let's go ahead and take a look at what we can make this area. This area is going to be in the middle ground. And I'm going to make that into a lake. So I'm going to put some items in there. And of course, you put your own items in there. And then when we come back in just a moment, we'll each have something different. Okay, so starting with the lake area, I went ahead and put a boat in the water. And I put some trees. They're on the shoreline. They're not in this ground. They're on the shoreline. Then I put some little marks to make texture, like little waves in the water. So the next thing I want to do is I want to put something in this ground right here. So let's see what we can think to put there. Let's come right back in just a moment. All right, so in this area, in this ground, I put several little trees and they're considerably smaller than the trees on that shoreline. So now we're gonna make this the ground of sky. Now the sky always meets a horizon. So technically the horizon is up here where the sky ends. So up here, let's just, let's just do some quick bumping line clouds. And some people may still make their clouds like that. Doesn't matter, whatever, whatever makes you happy. Uh, it's just all about practicing, okay? So the next thing we need to do is we need to work on this ground right here. So I'm going to add some things to this ground and uh, then we'll come back before I move on. Let's just take this one step at a time. Okay, so in this ground, which is in the center of the paper, I did what was on the uh, website. So I did a house, I did a couple of trees and a very interesting, unattractive car. So that completes that ground for now. So let's move into this area, which I would call the four middle, foreground, and then four, they don't really have names like that. So anyway, right here, we're going to add something else into this area of the picture. Okay, so in this ground, I put something that looks kind of like a little farm area, a little silo there. Um, no, they're not perfect. That's why this is a great intro to space. Now I need to add something here that's going to be the first thing that your eye sees as you're looking into the picture. So it needs to be larger than this, which is larger than this, which is larger than this. So we need to put something right here. So let's see what we can come up with. All right, so I put some treetops right here and you're looking over the treetops into the scenery. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna take my blotter paper and I'm gonna take my Sharpie 
and I'm going to go ahead and outline all of my pencil lines, every one of them. Now, just like in other projects that I've done, if I don't like the look of this right here, this is when I can change it. I don't need to ink or outline what's there. I can change it as I outline it to uh, maybe look a little better than I have it looking right now. So I'll finish my work, you finish yours, and we'll come back together and see how it looks. All right, so I have finished outlining with the Sharpie marker all of my pencil lines that I want to stay there. Now, if you'll look into the tree and uh, into some of the house areas, I have a lot that I want to erase, but I want to get the point across that it doesn't matter because you can erase after you outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and outline, and I'm also gonna go ahead and color. And uh, I think this time I'm going to use maybe a combination of markers and crayons, and let's see how that looks. All right, so go ahead and work on yours as well, and when we come back together, we'll get to see what we've done. Okay, so I have outlined it, I have colored it, and like I said, this resource is on artprojectsforkids.org, um, and you can see their example as well. We just changed a few little things, but this was practice, just like the perspective that we did in the previous space uh, video. So what your assignment is now is to pick one of these two styles either the foreground, middle ground, background with several layers of each or the vanishing point perspective. And I want for you to do your own. Uh, you do not have to do the trees like this. You can do cities, you can do railway, you can do deserts, you can do anything. I encourage you to look on the internet for different types of one point perspective examples or vanishing point art lesson examples. And then of course there are several with foreground, middle ground, background art lesson examples. So these are just the two for uh, practice. And I want for you to go ahead and I don't even know what I'm doing yet. I'm gonna do a lot of thinking about it and then I'll come back later and I'll have my example to share as well. Have fun.